So um, I've said Indian perspective, primarily because uh, it's an alien concept abroad. Maybe, uh, you know, uh, you know last, uh, last month I was in Miami and talking to one of my colleagues there, and he said, well, there's a specific instrument to do a specific purpose. Uh, I think you should be using that. Yeah, but in India, things are different. Um, we saw uh, White Equity coming, or uh, Intuitive coming out with a product specifically meant for the Indian market. It's cost effective. I think that's the key word here, cost effectiveness in whatever we do. And I think we owe it to our patients as well. So uh, this is primarily use, going to be useful for uh, patients or doctors working in a corporate setup who uh, uh, will realize what I'm trying to say. But even in government institutions, there's somebody subsidizing uh, whatever happens in the government institution as well. So I think we owe it to ourselves and as a country to be frugal in whatever we do. Uh, let me say, ta start by saying what is a center of excellence? A center of excellence is a center that delivers a perceptible, perceivable difference in outcome when compared to other centers. And why do robotic surgeons need to create centers of excellence? And that's because that's the only way to survive. Uh, survival of the fittest. And in healthcare, centers that offer a difference or an excellent service are the ones that are going to survive. And if it is done at an affordable cost, you know, our survival is ensured. So it's not only the outcomes, it's how cost effective these outcomes are. Um, but these are, I think, you know, it looks like two co competing priorities, but I'm going to tell you that it's not a competing priority. It can be done together. So this is, it's, it's you know, world population 6.7 billion, and any technology that doesn't touch a ma massive amount of our population, especially in India, cannot be considered a success. So our special uh, you know, challenge is to provide and maintain quality at an affordable cost. And I think I'm here to tell you the way to achieve that is to scale up, increase your volumes. So the morning stock was high volume service delivery, and now I'm telling you that in order to be frugal, your volumes have to be increasing, and the reason is our operational efficiency increases significantly. So let's take a lesson from eye care services. I'm ho I hope all of you have heard of Arvind Eye Care uh, Hospitals. Yes? So it's, it's a uniquely uh, uh, used phenomenon from Tamil Nadu, and um, I'll tell you a little bit about them. 200 million people need eye care in India, and less than 10% have been reached. And Arvind Eye Clinic started in 1976 with 11 bed clinic, and today they've treated 32 million people and operated on 4 million uh, patients. So the important thing about Arvind system is 70% of what they do is free of cost. And yet, they're one of the most cost effective organizations making a profit in the eye care field today. So, it's not like cost efficiency cannot be combined with huge amounts of profit and quality, so their outcomes and complications are comparable to the best centers in the world. I'm just trying to implement some of that. You know, it's been done, it's been shown that it's possible. Why not do that in robotic surgery as well? So the biggest component that I'm going to talk about is cost, and, and we've shown the world that we can do it. And India breaks the record for launching most number of satellites from a single rocket most number of satellites on a single day, and the most cost-effective way of sending a probe to Mars. So why not in robotic surgery? So what can you do in robotic surgery? Um, look at volumes, quality, and cost. And you know, other important thing is, if you're a high-volume surgeon, it's very, imp e very easy to ruin your reputation. You know, if, if you if you one particular point, you're not good with one single patient, you know, it's as easy to say that you're only as good as your last dance. In cricket, IPL these days, you know, most of the players are only as good as their last century. Otherwise, they're out of the business. So something similar to us happens as well. We have to be cognizant of that fact. So number one is, if you've got good volumes, if your operational efficiency is good, make sure your complications are limited as well. You know, do it right the first time. Get a proctor if you're learning, but in India, nobody will accept a failure. But in India, we cannot afford a failure. And you have to bring him back to theater, do it one more time. Even he pays double. 
not acceptable. Surgery cost, when we started out, when I came back from the US, this was the biggest obstacle. Um, Kishore was talking about, does every minute count? Of course, in, in the operating room, every minute counts. It costs 400 rupees per, per minute operating room in Apollo operating theaters. I'm sure most of the corporate hospitals are at that level. So fixed costs with us are uh, instruments and the robot. We can't really change them, or can we? We did, because you know I'll talk to you about how we got down the instrument costs. If we, if we reduce uh, the number of instruments that we use for prostatectomy from five to three, we can save a lot of money. But I'll tell you how we do it. So again, every minute costs 400 rupees in the OR. So what did we do? We did a protocol. You know, unless the robot is draped, the patient cannot go in. Unless the back table is ready, the patient cannot go into the operating room. Unless the scrub is ready, they cannot go in. You know, you usually see you know, some, some of our tech, techs sauntering into the operating room and then say, where is the patient? patient gone to the toilet, somebody came into the operating room and then went to the toilet and so on. So that happens. You know, at 400 rupees per minute, we ought not to allow that to happen. So make it protocol based, make sure every minute counts and, and get into the OR. So in every procedure, there will be some key steps which can't be compromised. I'm not asking you to compromise on them, but you can modify everything else. You know, each patient has to be looked at as an opportunity to give them a very good outcome and at the same time improve our operational efficiency and cost effectiveness as well. So in nephrectomy, um, you know, even skin sutures, if you're taking five minutes extra, it costs 2,000 rupees extra in the operating room. You know, that makes a difference. You know, um, um, I'm gonna talk about partial nephrectomy. A lot of uh, hoopla about uh, tissue sealants, again, 10,000 rupees. We've done more than 300 partial nephrectomies here in, in Chennai in the last three years, and we've never had to use tissue sealants. Not that, you know, I'm not trying to denounce that, but for our country, we have to look at each and every rupee that we spend in the operating room. Um, use of bipolar versus PK and needle holding properties. I think the bipolar and PK are fantastic needle holders. You just have to get used to them as a needle holder and use them for that particular purpose as well. And fourth arm drape, do you know how much each single drape costs? It's 2,500 rupees. I'm, I'm not sure uh, oh, what is going to like me for this one. <laughs> it's 2,500 rupees. So you can reduce one instrument. You save on the instrument cost, save on the drape cost as well. Again, think about it. I'm not here to talk about, I'm to tell you, at no point in time I'm trying to compromise on the outcome of the patient. If you increase your skill level, operating efficiency, I'm here to tell you that these things don't make a difference in the long term. So I'll show you how we do it. Again, two instruments, robotic kidney surgery. Uh, for nephrectomies, it doesn't really make you maximum you need is two instruments. There's no need to use three. Get another robotic port inside, but use, ask your assistant to use it. You can even, if you're using partial nephrectomies, I only use three instruments. It's going to be a PK, a needle holder and a hot shear. And the needle holder will act as a retractor initially, and when we're doing the procedure, the scissor is going to be acting as a retractor. Or get your assistant to use his forceps at that point in time. So that's something we can do. Again, make sure your skill levels are good enough so that your operating time doesn't increase because you're, because you're reducing the number of instruments. All this makes a difference. So suturing as well, very good. Um, it doesn't really impede you. You know, the, there's, there's a way in which you need to pull with the plasma kinetic. You cannot just handle the needle and pull it, but pull it towards, you know, parallel to where it comes out, and then take it out. And it easily works when you're doing that. Um, I'm going to quickly show you some of our vesicurethral anastomosis. Again, only if you're consistently doing a prostatectomy within three hours, 
should you try and experiment with this? And for that to happen, your volume should be good enough. So operational efficiency, again, we come back to the same core element. Make sure your operational efficiency is good before you experiment with that. Make sure your outcomes do not suffer because you want to save money. So centers of excellence are created by leaders, but is sustained by a team. Not only your operational efficiency, your team's operational efficiency matters. I've repeated this in the morning. I'm repeating it again because repetition is the mother of skill. Do it again, do it the same way, do it continuously until it's perfect. So keep skill levels high in the team. Concentrate on also training the lower level staff. You know, they all have to have this in mind. You know, if, if they waste about 10 to 15 minutes, it's half a month's pay for them that's already gone. Uh, but the lower level staff don't seem to realize that. You know, when they want to, you can want to get the patient out of the theater, he's already ready to come out, you have to call them. You know, but if you inculcate in them this idea that it's 400 rupees per minute, they won't do that. They'll come into the theater as soon as we call them, get it out as quickly as possible. It's a huge thing for us in corporate hospitals. So this is something very, very close to my heart. This is the need, this is what is available, and this is utilization. You know, that's the gap that we have between need and what is utilized. It's our goal to bridge the gap. It's our responsibility. In fact, we owe it to our patients, we owe it to our country to do it. To sustain an excellent center, you need volume, and we must take part in building that volume. You know, it's very easy to sit in a corporate hospital and say the marketing department does that, uh, that the management should look at it. We've got our skill levels, but only if we get patients, we can do, we, we can, we can show you what we've got and so on. It's not acceptable. It's our goal to go out and sit, take part in the administrative uh, control, get part of what we want and make it happen. So I think surgeons in developing countries must get involved in administration and not consider administrative tasks as pain. Uh, if you've not read this book, there are two books that, I've, uh, that I think very useful. The Fortune at the Bottom of the Pyramid and another book by Arvind Icar Systems, which chronicles their development from a single clinic to such a huge organization. It's called Infinite Vision, both of which talk about frugality in what they do without compromising on, on quality and the outcomes for the patient. I hope it's helped you. Thank you very much.